Welcome to the Plaxis LE training session on weak surfaces. My name is Murray Fredland and I will be walking you through the training today. This video will define weak surfaces and the need for them in the Plaxis LE 3D software. We will also cover how to implement them in a numerical model and what effect they have on critical slip surfaces. We will also examine their effect on the searching algorithms to find the critical slip surface. The influence of weak surfaces to augment the shape of a basic slip surface will be discussed. Lastly, we will discuss the interactions between columns and weak surfaces. It is common in numerical modeling to encounter situations where the model must represent geological or man-made features in slopes that create thin zones of weakness. Common geologic conditions might be faults, dikes, cleavage, tension joints, or shear joints. Geotechnically, there may be weak, thin clay layers or geomembranes that are introduced to a slope with different shear strength properties than the surrounding material. The Plaxis LE software implements an object called weak surfaces that is intended to provide functionality to model all of these geologic or geotechnical man-made weak layers that have, been, that have negligible thickness. These weak surfaces are defined in the same manner as other surfaces in that there is the geometry of the feature, which is effectively a surface, as well as the user may assign material properties to the surface. The geometry of a weak surface amounts to a layer with zero thickness, which is therefore a surface. The ability of the slip surface searching algorithms to follow these weak surfaces is discussed subsequently in this video. There are two methods for implementing weak surfaces in a numerical slope stability model. They depend effectively on whether multiplane analysis is turned on or off. If multiplane analysis is currently disabled, which is the default mode, then the user can access the weak planes under the model settings dialog and select the 3D surface tab and check weak surfaces. If multiplane analysis is enabled, then the user must proceed to the multiplane analysis tab and check to include weak surfaces. It should be noted that this functionality is only available in the, in the analysis of 3D models. Subsequently, the user must proceed to the slips, weak surfaces dialog, and then the geometry and the material properties can be entered for each weak surface. A few things about weak surfaces definitions are that there are no limit to the number of weak surfaces which the user can input. It should also be noted that weak surfaces can be defined as planes in 3D or they can be uneven surfaces that are defined by a mesh or a rectangular grid. Combinations of intersections of weak surfaces can be considered to form a critical slip surface. This work uh, would be done by the searching algorithm and the user can specify the combinations that are explored. And by de default, all combinations are explored. Under the default searching mode, the search results will produce slip surfaces that are a combination of search method criteria and weak surfaces. The software will automatically recognize if a particular trial slip surface crosses a weak surface and will then try to follow the truncated surface. It's possible that non-ellipsoidal slip surfaces will result from considering weak surfaces in the software. So if an ellipsoidal slip surface is truncated by a weak surface, then the shear resistance will be calculated according to the material selected and assigned to the weak surface. The amount of influence of a weak surface will be related to the area of the slip surface that ends up following the weak surface. Having one or more weak surfaces in a model creates an additional complexity related to searching for a critical slip surface. This is because every time a trial slip surface crosses a weak surface, it's possible that a more critical slip surface can be found by following the weak surface rather than cutting through it. There are different methods for combining weak surfaces with the searching algorithm which may be selected under the model settings dialog. By default, the software searches for every combination of one or more augmenting surfaces as well as the current trial slip surface. This method is most likely to find the critical slip surface, but it takes longer than other methods. The one at a time method considers one augmenting surface to be active for each trial slip surface search. It's a faster method, but not as comprehensive. The all at once setting considers that all augmenting surfaces are active for each trial slip surface search. With the all at once method, the uppermost of all weak surfaces is the only one considered if there are more than one weak surface in a model. These settings may be found under the model settings dialog under the advanced tab. 
It's worth talking briefly about the interaction between the individual columns used in the calculation and weak surfaces. The materials defined for a weak surface become relevant when a column base is on a particular weak layer. When this happens, the weak surface material overrides the surrounding material when the shear resistance at the base of the column is calculated. It's possible that a particular column will extend partially in a weak surface area and will cause somewhat of an averaging effect. Uh, a higher column density will, will enable more precise results in relation to minimizing this effect. In summary, it should be noted that Plaxis LE can model weak surfaces in 3D slope stability analysis. Weak surfaces are comprised of geometry which may be planar or defined by an uneven surface using a mesh or grid, as well as material properties which may be assigned to a weak surface. Weak surfaces can affect slip surfaces and it's possible that an ellipsoid type of surface will be truncated by a weak surface and result in a more critical sliding mass. So thank you so much for your time and this concludes the session on the modeling of weak surfaces in the Plaxis LE software.